May God bless you and welcome to our weekly Bible study. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything you've done for us. We ask you, Father, for a message that would touch every soul that hears it. We pray that it will be your words and no one else's, and that it will go forth for your glory. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. To play you guys a song before we get started. Now I woke up this morning. Saw a lie ahead. God. I don't know which direction we're going tonight, but we're going to follow the Lord and just let him do what he does because he does so well. What a God we serve. What a God he is. What a way that he's made a way. Let us go into his word. Let us go to the book of Philippians. Philippians 4. Let us go through that book and just let God use it in the way that he would give it. I tell you, I know a new year has started. It's an exciting time, but I don't know about you, but but I feel the enemy's trying to attack me. I feel like he's trying to really just put a downer on this year. It's been extremely cold where I live. It's just been some days that just kind of like those blah days, you know? And what I know is that usually when the worst days or the hardest days or the most tedious of times come, that God is about to do something mighty. You know, you have those days like the song, if I could hear from heaven, could make it one more day. So let us see God in his word and let us see what kind of message he'll give us because he's able to give a message. A mighty one at that. Let us pray and ask him, dear Lord, we just ask you to let this message, Lord, let it be all you, Lord. We pray you would speak to each heart, Lord, that you would touch us in a way, Lord, with your word, Lord, inspire and, and just help us, Lord. If we could hear from heaven, Lord, we could make it one more day truly and many more days, Lord. And we thank you for the many times you've, you've given us a word, Lord. And we thank you for the words you're about to give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Philippians 4 begins, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Sometimes easier said than done. But if we will stand fast and hold on to the promises, hold on to his mighty hand, our God is on his way. Our God is able. He's faithful. It may seem he's so far away, but truly he is able to do all things. I beseech you, you odious, and beseech Sintish, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other of my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Let us strive to be those laborers in this harvest. They get our names into the book of life. Well, I haven't really 
studied that one name, couldn't really pronounce it perhaps the right way, but our Lord knows full well that name. And if that name's in the book of life, then God, God is the one that allowed it to be. God is the one that led that, that servant of his. And what a God he is. If we put our life in his hands, there's nothing better, no better place you or I can commit our way, commit our life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Even on those days when you say, Lord, if I could hear from heaven, Lord, why is it so hard? Why is it so cold? Why is, why is it so cloudy outside? Why is the outlook for jobs or, or my health or whatever it might be? Why is it so hard? Why does life have to be this way? Why are my legs hurting? Why is my back sore? Whatever the case might be, let us rejoice that we're here another day, that those good and perfect gifts that God has blessed us with, that we can still enjoy those things, that those, those good points to this life, and the good far outweighs the bad, truly, if we're in Christ, if we're walking for him. Because we know no matter how bad it gets, it's just a doorway to something so much better. We can't be defeated in Christ. Rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Let us be moderate and not boastful and all that, except when we talk about our God, except when we glorify him, then yeah, yeah, my God is awesome. My God did this. My God made a way. That's not for us to brag on ourselves for whatever we have. God is the one that gave it to us, but, but let us live in moderation, showing a humble lifestyle and letting him bless us, letting him do all that he will do. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. I tell you, God, it's not too busy for you. My mom, years ago, she would write her prayers down. She said, I don't want God to have to deal with this because he's got enough going on. I'll write them down and he can answer them when he's got time. I tell you, God's got time. He's got time for you and for me. And let us... Let us go to him. Let us not be shy to ask him for what we'll ask for him to do in our life. Ask him to bless us, to lead us, to, to use us, to show us, to direct us, to, to touch the lives of whoever it might be, to lift up our cares and our concerns and all those different things to a mighty God who can take it on, who can do it. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. You know, before we do whatever it is that we do, when we wake up in the morning, let's pray and ask the Lord to lead our day, to have his will in our day to help us. Because he's able. And he's got time for you. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So if we, will, if we will be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God. It says, in the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So if I will commit my way to him, if you will commit your way to him, if I will make my requests, my prayers known to him, do everything by prayer, asking him to be in it, asking him to guide it, asking him to work it out, giving him thanks and the glory and the honor and the praise that our God, our God gives us a peace that passeth all understanding. That's that kind of peace that I don't have a job. I don't know who in the world's going to call, but I know my God is able. I don't feel good at all. I'm sick as I can be. I may not have insurance, but I've prayed and asked my God to help me. My God is able. I don't know where in the world we're going to get this money for this bill, but I know my God is able. And being at peace, even though the world around you is falling apart, not wearying ourselves with worry, but instead trusting and knowing and even thanking him in advance, Lord, I thank you. I don't know how you're going to work this out. I don't know how you're going to do it. But I know if anybody can, it is you. I know you're able. I know you're faithful. I know that I know that peace that passes understanding, passes logic and all that worldly logic, man's way. 
the doctor tells y'all, you've got X amount of days to live. You've got this long. God will tell you. He will show you how long you have. J. Vernon McGee, a mighty man of God. I love his program. It's called Through the Bible. I think it's ttb.org. Great Bible teaching program and all that. This man died in 88. I heard him in like 2002 when I first was, was learning his his you know program, learning about his program and hearing him and, and all that and, and being blessed. And I found out he passed away in 88 and I almost cried. But this man of God was told 26 years before he died that he had about six months to live. J. Vernon McGee lived on until God said, it's time for you to be done. Message still going in all kinds of languages all over. Because God said, this man is on my timeline. You are on God's timeline. That peace that passes all understanding where I know my God has got me. So man and whatever man says, whatever man does, will only go as far as what Almighty God allows Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know, we're starting a new year. And let us, let us remember that verse, Philippians 4 and 8. And let us concentrate on all that. The good stuff. The good stuff. Because the good stuff, you know where it comes from. James 1 will tell you every good and perfect gift comes from him. Make no mistake about it. While the enemy would like to, to let you think he's got some great stuff for you, but he gives you those shiny, bright cars fall apart in about a year or six months you can't start the thing or or whatever his way it's always something shiny and pretty but it never pans out in the long run and there's a burning hell at the end for all the things that may pan out for a long time they don't pan out eternally or ultimately i guarantee you his way does not but then there's that consuming fire of god there's that god's way in our life when we let him have his way when we let him do what he's doing we meditate on those good things we follow after righteousness we seek him and we see our god move mighty ways those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the god of peace shall be with you you gotta love the apostle paul follow me as I follow Christ, he would tell him. He would tell us, you know, as we read his writings, let us follow him as he followed Christ. And we know that this brother, we know this brother had a good report. We see the fruit. The same way for this minister, for whatever minister you're listening to, for whatever brother or sister in Christ that's leading you or giving you a word or whatever. Follow him as they follow in Christ. Those things as he says, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do and the God of peace shall be with you. Paul can say it because Paul will go on and do what he came to do. He will follow and carry out the mission that God gives him. He says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now in the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Now let us, let us learn that as well. You have those days, Lord, if I could just hear from heaven, this, this life, it bears down upon me, this struggle, this trial, this thing I'm going through, this illness or whatever it is that you face. Let us, let us learn to be content. To ask him for that peace, for that strength, and to have that peace that passes all understanding, to focus on those things which are good and pure and true and of good report and of virtue and all those things. 
Because it's so easy to be caught up in the negative. So easy to get caught up in all the things, all the man-made understanding and logic and all that, and not seeing what he is able to do. The but God, but God can not realize in and of ourselves that he is the one not giving him the credit he deserves as we worry, as we get confused and discouraged and all that. And I know it's human. I know it's hard. This life is hard, but, but let us seek to be content in whatever state that we are in. Let us seek to be content and faithful saying, you know what, this God. And as God reminded the children of Israel so many times about how he led them across the Red Sea and, and did the things that he did, let us, and when we get into those pity party type of days, let us begin to list the things that our God has done, the times that our God has done, all that he's done. I was just talking to my mom a few minutes ago. I had a good talk with her. She lost a baby years ago. I've told you guys about that, some messages and stuff. And she went into hemorrhaging about five days after losing the baby. And my dad's outside talking to the doctor, and they leave the door cracked, and mom's in there in the hospital bed. And the doctor, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning. He tells my dad, if you want to go on home, we'll call you when this is done in the morning. My mom's laying there listening to this. They're giving up on her. This is years and years ago before I'm even born. But you know, God had that final say. The doctor had already said, yeah, this is done. Yeah, we'll call you when this is done. God says, she's on my timeline. She will live as long as I say. Isn't God that way? Isn't God that way? And he'll bless us. He'll move in mighty ways. He'll, he'll let us live so long just to show man that man is not over anything, but God is over all things to show us how good and how faithful and true he is. And no matter what you get to, no matter what is facing you today, look at all the times God has made a way. Mom got some bad news today from the doctor. But as you look at the times like that, when God made a way, God can do it again. I love that gospel song. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you were then. Hasn't God always come through, through for you? God is able, brothers and sisters. I think we were in verse number... But I rejoiced in the Lord. I probably might have read this one already. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. We just read it, but praise God. Let us learn more and more to be content in whatever state and to be expecting, to be expecting an able God to make a way. You get so caught up sometimes on what it looks like, what's going on around us. But God doesn't care about what's going on around you. He didn't care about that Egyptian army coming to deal with his people. For he knew that he was about to part that Red Sea. So it didn't matter how many Pharaoh had with him. It didn't matter what they were planning to do. God was going to open up a way and his children were going to go forward. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Right now, it doesn't matter to God. Oh, it matters that he loves you and he cares for you, but he's not intimidated by your circumstances. He's not going to be overwhelmed by what's going on, the bills or whatever that are piling up, the health care concerns, the job concerns or the outlook of the market right now. They don't worry God in any way, shape or form because God made this thing. God's not worried. Why should you be? He's the one that's got to be in charge of this thing, not us. We don't have to be in charge of it. He's the one that's, that's told us that he would take care of our lives, that he would lead us, that he would do all that he's able to do. Let's allow him to do it. Let's allow him to take it all in his mighty hands. 
and let us focus on those good things. Let us do what he's given us strength to do. Let us lift up things in prayer and give him thanks and, and know who he is. And let us believe. That's our job to believe, to be faithful, to expect, and to press forward, content in whatever state we're in with a peace that passes all understanding that our Father, our Father will take care of it. When I was a little kid, my parents, I know they had some financial difficulty. I was always having surgery as a little kid. You know, I didn't know we were poor. I didn't know they were struggling. Imagine a lot of kids don't know what their parents are going through. You know, dad and mom, they made a way. How much more? Well, our Father, eternal heavenly Father. And my dad was an awesome guy, but my God is so much better a father than he or I or any other man, no matter how wonderful we try to be. God loves his kids more. He loves my kids more than me. He can do things for my kids. He can be there for my kids. Places I can't imagine how I could even get there or do anything. God can take care of them. God can take care of you and me because we're his babies too. Just like your kids are your babies, even when they're 55 or whatever. We're God's babies. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. No matter what we go through, no matter what it requires or whatever, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Not because of us, but because of he that's in us. Beautiful thing to have him to call on. A couple of these verses are always on things, slogans and all that. But as you look at this whole chapter, it gets better and better. Just getting deeper into God's word. Notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again into my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. The Apostle Paul, what, a, what an example he sets for missionaries and pastors and evangelists and preachers and Sunday school teachers and youth directors and whatever, whatever type of person we are, whatever role we are in the body of Christ. He says, I desire that there may be fruit. In your life. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. I want you to see how good God is. I want you to be blessed. I want you to have a harvest in your life, in other words. It wasn't about him. Paul's about the most selfless individual in the Bible because Paul knows what he was. He was this zealous man of God all through, but he wasn't doing it right when he was going forth and persecuting Jesus and his church. But then Paul, on the road to Damascus, he's turned around. We talked about Ananias. And Ananias was there. Let us be that Ananias to people as we discussed. You know, reaching out to him, being a light for God. Paul's turned around. And when he's turned around, he's on fire to do this thing and to do it and to do it well and to see many saved and many lifted up and many on the battlefield for our Lord, many taking the gospel this way, that, and the other, everywhere it can go. And he wants to see fruit to their account, not to his own. It's not about him. Oh, he's already been blessed that he who was on the road to hell is no longer on that road. He's on the road instead to victory, to something greater and the guilt that he has for all that he's done. You know, people, there's a brother I know that he deals with guilt. I was telling him, brother, all the guilt that you've got, put it into praying for that person that you feel guilty about. Because God has, has washed away the things in the past and now you're on a, a new road no, you can't change those things in the past. Though Paul couldn't go back and change those things that he did. You know what he did? He said, from here on, from here to eternity, I am going to do this thing for my Lord. And he does it. He goes forth. He 
got stuff like this. Oh, God gives it to him, but man, he's accredited with writing some awesome stuff for being there, being available, having his pen ready. When God gave the words, it's all from God, but what an amazing minister the Apostle Paul is. He's still preaching. How many generations, how many souls? Whoever reads the New Testament, they, they know this Apostle Paul. He wants fruit to abound to your account, to my account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you in odor of a sweet smell of sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Another well-known scripture, but also another scripture. It's true. That sometimes we, we hear it so much. and It's kind of like we, we take it for granted. Like it's just another slogan, but it's not. It's a promise. From an almighty God that's made good on every one of his promises. And he ain't going to start bouncing checks now. He ain't going to start going back on promises now. His word is true. You can take his word to the bank. And this word, my God, shall supply your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We're not saying that there's going to be a million dollars in your account tomorrow when you go to the ATM. But better. There's going to be a peace in you that passes all understanding. There's going to be a joy even when the storm is coming. There's going to be a strength, a security, even when you're in total danger. There's going to be something so much better because he gave it to you. That's true riches. It's not this prosperity stuff that everybody's trying to get rich and have more money so they can go out and probably sin a lot more and be tempted a whole lot more. Yeah, God will bless you. Yeah, God will open doors. Yeah, God will provide and even bless abundantly like he can do. But I tell you, the riches that you and I truly need are those riches right here that my God has shown me. Those riches right here that my God has shown me. My God has shown me, hey, this it's me. This is my kingdom. This is what it's about. This is my word. This is what it means. That we can see so good that we can't miss it. That we can go out and give it to somebody else that so needs to hear it because there's a world dying and going to hell right now. So many. You and I might be the only Ananias that can go out and reach out to somebody. We might be the only one can touch a life for Christ. So let us learn these principles. Let us apply them. Let us be rich in Christ, in our hearts. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, no matter how you've lived your life up to this point, today is a chance to either recommit it with him, make a new start if you've if you've slidden away, if you've gone years and years without coming to him, if you've done whatever you've done, God is able to forgive. God is able to wash you clean. God is able to take care of you. He's able to give you a new start. Or if you've not given your life to him, I want to tell you, if you'll live for God, God will take care of everything. You'll have to play your part, amen. But, but as we've preached right here, you can trust him with everything. If you'll do it his way, he's got it. Why don't you give it to him? Why don't you give your life to him today? No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how far you've gone from him, he's willing to forgive you. Ask the apostle Paul, who was known as Saul of Tarsus, who was going forth, doing all kind of mess to the people of Christ. And then he's turned around and he writes stuff like this. So much of the New Testament that God gives him to write. God's word. 
Won't you give your life to him today? Won't you give your life to the Lord? Make a new start today. If you're recommitting or if you're giving your life to him for the first time, you're worthy to be saved. Though none of us are worthy of anything in and of ourselves, this flesh is wicked. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because our Savior gave his life a sacrifice for you and me and spilled his perfect, sinless blood, we can be washed clean and set free and put on a new path. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, Jesus died for you. Jesus loves you. Would you pray this prayer and give your life to him? Dear Lord, I'm a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Lord, I ask you to come into my life in all ways and to take over. Lord, I give my life to you. Please help me from here on, Lord. Let me walk for you all my days. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, there's no better decision you can make than to live for Christ. Now get into your Bible, begin reading. Find your Bible, believe in church. Feel free to come be with us. We do a weekly full-length message. We do a weekly Bible study. We do a five-minute daily devotional. Five minutes with God. The Five Minutes with God video Facebook page is our home on the, on the internet. We've got five minutes with God video.com. Come be with us. Come be part of our fellowship and a local church. You know, you never have too much of him. Find you some people that love the Lord to be around, to encourage one another. We need one another. Be baptized if you've not. Just live this thing for him all your days. We love you guys. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Lord, we lift up so many cares and concerns on our heart, Lord. I want to lift my mom up, Lord. She got some bad news from the doctor today, Lord. But I know that you have the final say, Lord. And I give you all that's going on with her. I ask you for healing, Lord. I pray for so many, Lord. I pray for Julie Hamilton and her husband for healing, Lord. I pray for so many people, Lord. Tommy Powers, God, I ask you to strengthen my brother from head to toe, Lord. Please help him in all ways, Lord. Brother named Tyler, I pray you to heal him from head to toe, God. So many, Lord. So many. Michelle Koyak, Lord, I pray for her, Lord. So many, Lord. We lift up to you. You know the names and the needs, God, and we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're about to do. Lord, in the holy name of Jesus, we pray. And we lift up so many that don't know you and pray they come to know you before it's too late. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. I want to encourage you if this message has touched your heart, feel free to share it. Let's be share warriors and prayer warriors. I love you guys. I'm just glad that God sent you this way if he sent you this way. And I just thank him for being able to, to share the word. May God bless you.